Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. And this is the price report number 30 for this week. And let's get started. The three things I'm going to talk about in this report. The first is the list of countries with high inflation. And I'm going to do some projection. So I gathered data from different sources and just going to make some logic out of that. And then one of the on-chain data that got triggered. And later I'm going to come to technical analysis. So let us talk about inflation. You see the countries that are marked in dark red and red color is having high inflation as of today. Right. And if you see this list, this is for the G20 group 20 countries of the developed and the emerging countries nations worldwide. And you would see that the inflation in Turkey is about 80 percent today. And when you're talking about states, it's 9% and mo most of the European countries are around 7 to 10% as of today. And this is an interesting part because I believe there is a threshold, a threshold beyond which when the inflation crosses, it's really, really hard for the governments to take back control to bring back inflation, bring down inflation. We can see this in the example of Turkey. They had about 11% inflation couple of years back in 2020 they were kind of managing that which is already quite high and it went out of bounds and then now it's 70 percent also because of their some of the policies that they did and probably bad policies and if you see an example of venezuela historically like this is ranging back to about 30 years 35 years they started with something like 11 percent inflation back then and went to 40 tried to control it and at some point, they, it just goes out of hand. And this was hyperinflation. Good for them that they have exited the hyperinflation. Now it's back to around 1,500%, projected to 500% in a year from now. But this is still, you know, it's unbelievable, right? So that's why government start to go into the panic mode when the inflation reaches really high levels because it can cripple the whole economy of the country. Having said that, this is a list of the change in the annual inflation rate since the pandemic started. And you would see the worldwide, for example, in Israel, the inflation rates were a negative and now it's 25x. It's still about quite low. I mean, it's about 3%, but they had negative before. So worldwide, the inflation percentage increase has been enormous. Some of the economies have been doing well. Uh, I won't believe the last in line, but there are, uh, you know, all throughout you would see it's increased rapidly. And certainly Turkey has really one of the emerging countries with high inflation rates. That is a cause for concern for the country. So this is about the inflation part and also to indicate the inflation is the overall increase in the price levels and there is the official inflation rate is calculated by, you know, measuring this thing called CPI, which is the consumer price index, which tracks the cost of living. So the cost of living worldwide has really shot up. So now we get to the on-chain analysis. So the reason I want to show this is because this pure multiple which indicates the health of miners. This indicator got triggered just a few days back. And what I want to show from this is whenever this, this is the price of Bitcoin that you see in blue. And the one in red is the pool multiple. Basically, whenever this enters into a greenish territory, that means miners are really uh, finding difficult to pay their bills and capitulating basically, selling of their mining farms or selling their Bitcoins. And when it reaches red, that means it's, uh, uh, you know, they are in really, really good health. And what happened just within the last few days is that this has come back above the green zone. That means my, the health of miners are again starting to look good. So what can take place from here is either they sell off their Bitcoins because, you know, they are doing better. So they are, they might be a little careful about not going back into the green territory because of the market conditions or they might be in a good health, uh, accumulating Bitcoins. So we have to wait and watch what happens. Not many Bitcoins are printed per day. However, let's, let's move on. So let's move on to the technical analysis. 
so this is the one hourly chart for Bitcoin and we are gonna let's see this is interesting because this is when we had this about two months ago mid of June we had this capitulation to 17,000 and since then you would see that uh, Bitcoin has been making a lower highs so what that means is you would see that you this is the first lower high this is the second lower high and this is the third lower high and that is where we are right now about 200 weekly moving average right also called the OG support and what's what might be happening from here as I see is that if we have this projection from the last two tops of the cycle uh, that we saw in the last two months and we project that up we get about uh, the 16th of August about the mid of August and this is technically you know worked out pretty well that we can expect to see some sort of pump to the upside and my expectation would be if everything goes as we see of course things are subject to change then we reach this resistance level about 30,000 this is about here or 28,000 about here and then there is a possibility for us to come back down to the current levels of uh, 200 week moving average about 23,000 and certainly there are also calls of us going down to the levels of 10,000 which I don't feel like the case so let me try to highlight why I think so here you would see this is the weekly chart for Bitcoin and here you would see I've added something called the hash ribbons which is pretty much in reflection of what I said before about the pool multiple which is the miners health so whenever you see us going into the red zone the miners are capitulating and when they come back up they come back strong in their health so I want to show you a couple of things here sorry let me just get a vertical line over here so whenever historically we also let's start with the 2017 bear market so the miners had capitulated miners historically capitulate when the bear market is about to end that is when they capitulate and you would see that after they capitulate and, and they come back they turn healthy there is a bull market that ensues because people start and miners start accumulating once more and the effect will be less and less as we go forward because the number of coins produced in a day is less as compared to before every four year cycle and that has been the case every time whenever they come out of capitulation the bull market ensues and now you see that they have entered capitulation when let's say the bear market phase had already begun and the pattern repeats or at least rhymes and I also want to show what is the time period of the capitulation of this miners so it's about 70 days and also if you look at the charts the hash ribbons for the from the past it's about 70 to 90 days at max so that means about three months of projection from here on so they started doing this end of May and if we just project this let's say even 100 days so that shows us about uh, 19th of September so that is a, a month and a half from here when we can expect some kind of a relief rally to the upside again that is just a projection based on probability and pattern matching so let's go ahead with the XMR USD chart and here I have drawn uh, an interesting indicator that is the volume oscillator and what I want to show from this is whenever the volume oscillator goes to the negative let's say about minus 20 percent that you see on the right there is a uh, there is a pump or a dump that ensues because the volume comes back up strong and there is a relief rally for example so I've seen eight out of ten times in XMR in the history there is a relief rally when we come back from a low volume oscillator to high and you can see here I'm just matching the two graph and the volume oscillator you can see here there is a rally that happened and you can see here there's a rally, the rally that happened and again and we are again moving towards the negative territory so likelihood that in the coming days there is a, a pump to the upside and the amount of uh, the amount that we pump is about 1.5 to 2x so again this is just based on pattern matching and probability so it's not the source of truth and in terms of volumes again this has to happen when the volumes take up uh, this is about 180 dollars of price level that I was looking at and I would like to see us go up with high volumes if so we break, we break that level 
And for Monero, the average price in a bull market has been about $200 million. And I see the volumes picking back up. I saw about an average volume of $120 million on a daily basis, which is healthy as compared to a few months back when we were lurking around 60 to $70 million. And the last in line is the XMR BTC chart. Um, it has been a good news that it's been doing pretty well in the long term trend line thing, which I had drawn before. Um, so in terms of also the let me hide this guy. So long term trend line. Let me get the one week map. So yes, in terms of BTC, we had been doing pretty well. However, in terms of the RSI, we have on a weekly basis, we are quite overbought at the moment. So we can certainly go back up, but at some point I do expect some kind of correction in XMR BTC. And that is all from my side for this price report. I hope you all enjoyed and I wish you all have a great weekend ahead. Thank you.